Hey everybody, welcome to Level Pixel Level, and welcome to part two of uh, my exploration of rigging nodes. In the last video, I just gave you a quick guide of how to create a simple rig using rigging nodes. Again, you can check out the full Blender Artist article here, and you can download it from the Aquatic Nightmare site, and I'll link both in the description. In some of the future videos, I'll talk about uh, how to rig full assets, but before I get into that, I want to talk about two nodes in a bit more detail, and that's the input armature and the loop node. I think once you understand how to use these two nodes, everything else kind of falls into place with the whole setup. So I'm going to hit Shift A, and I'm going to go to Inputs, and I'm going to do an Input Armature. So here's where I usually create my armature object. So I can click on New, and then I can choose an option here called Add Input. I'm just going to choose Name, and click OK. I'll just name this My Rig. And just for this example, I'm going to add a bone with an add a bone node here, and I'm just going to add one more node. It's a flow control and it's an execute node. So if I just set this preview, I get two bones here. The first one comes from my input armature, and the second one comes from my add bone node here, and then my execute puts it all together. If I select this armature and viewport and just grab one of these bones and just duplicate it out, and click set preview again, all of my duplicates disappear. That's because this is almost like a script. It's just a script that is running this way. The same way if you had your script editor open and you scripted all of this and then hit the play button. The script does not care what you do in 3D view. So if I come here and duplicate a bunch of nodes and then were to hit play on my script again, it would just run the script again and like delete whatever I've added. That's one big thing with rigging nodes is it's a one-way street. So what you do here pushes into the viewport editor. It does not go the other way around, except for one node, and that's the input armature, and that's this little button right here. So I'm gonna show you what I mean now. I'm actually gonna delete this add bone node and push this into here. If I set preview again, that's gonna make that other bone disappear there. So this option here is called edit data block. When I click on this, I've entered edit mode and I can actually edit my rig. And now when I scroll back and hit set preview, it updates in viewport with those. So I can come back here at any time and even extrude a bunch of bones and hit set preview and that's gonna apply. So this is where I always create my deform bones. This is where I do my base editing and all of my mechanics go on top of this. So anything I want to run procedurally happens in the node graph and any bones I want to create manually, I do over here. So it's just one thing to keep in mind when you're working with rigging nodes. When I'm working on some more practical elements, rigs, you'll see how I use this input armature node in a bit more detail. Okay, let's look at the loop node as well too. So I'm gonna go to loop and I'm gonna add a loop node here. There's nothing here off the top. If I set preview, it's actually going to break because there's nothing in here yet. I have to add one, and I'm going to name this my loop. And you'll notice that it's still broken. The, the red node means that this is broken and something is wrong. There's no inputs in this node right now. There's no outputs. You have to actually make those, and you make those by going into the node. So you hit tab, and once you're in here, you have a group output, you have a group input, and you have the loop index, the index that we're looping through at that moment. Once you're in here, you have to actually create your inputs and your outputs. To do that, I'm just gonna add a bone and I'm gonna set bone property. I'm gonna take the armature option out of here and plug it into my group input. And I'll take the armature out of here and I'll plug it into my group output. If I hit tab and exit here, you'll notice that now I have an armature object option here and an object node over here. So I'll plug this into here, and I'll plug this into here. Now, if I set preview again, it's still gonna break. That's because it doesn't have anything to loop through. The start index and the end index are exactly the same. I'm gonna put that to one, set preview, it's still broken. That's because within my loop, I haven't given it a bone to loop through. I'm just gonna pick one manually right now, bone. I'm gonna exit this again by hitting tab and hit set preview again. Now it's complete. It's running through one loop on this node. And you know what, let's add an input. Let's make it pose mode and let's flip it to, uh, let's set the rotation mode. And I'm gonna set it to XYZ Euler. Now, if I set the preview and come in here, this bone has XYZ Euler, but all of the other bones are still in quaternion. 
because we're not looping through them yet. We're only doing one loop and I've input this bone name manually. So let's actually make this dynamic. I'm gonna add another node here from the armature and that's called get bones. This takes an object input that I can plug in here and it outputs the names of the bones as a string array, which this accepts over here. Now what I can do is add another node called array get. I'll input this into the first field here and the index is the loop index. Then I'll push, push this into here. Now if I set my preview, again, I'm only getting the XYZ Euler on the first one, but all the other ones are quaternion. I need to increase this to five. If I go to six, it's gonna break because there aren't six bones. So I'll just go back one. Now these all have XYZ Euler on them. That's great. Let's add to it again. In 3D view, I'm just gonna add a mesh uh, circle and just move this over. Then I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna add an input, a custom shape or a custom object. Click OK, and that's gonna be my circle. Now, if I set preview, they're all gonna get that shape. That's perfect, but if I come back to my input armature and I edit this and actually delete bones and then do set preview again, it's going to break because I manually input the five here. If I bring this back to three, it's gonna work again. We can make this a little bit smarter though, and we can actually make the end index grab from the amount of bones in the rig. So if I do shift A and go to armature, I'm going to get bones again, input here, and I'm gonna add an array and I'm gonna get the length of the array. So if I plug this into here, it's gonna give me a number output that I can plug into my end index. Now it doesn't matter how many bones I add, they're all gonna to convert to XYZ Euler and they're all gonna get this circle shape. So if I set preview, you'll see that they have those three. And if I come back to here and duplicate more bones, it's gonna loop through all of them and pick them out here. So these two nodes are very important to working through rigging nodes. And I think just understanding the two of them is sort of key to figuring out your workflow. When I started playing around with rigging nodes, it took me a while to kind of wrap my head around how to use them in the right way. And it wasn't until I understood the input armature and the loop node that I saw how powerful these could be as a new way to rig in Blender. It almost becomes like procedural rigging where I'm looping through all the bones here, but there's no reason I couldn't loop through bones with just certain names, or even in here, I could search through bones with certain names. So this is just the beginning of what we can do with it. And in the next video, I'll do a practical example of how this works. With a very simple asset and three joints, we'll use a loop node with our input armature. Anyway, thanks to my patrons for supporting this video. It's because of them I can make this video. Head on over there if you want exclusive content, early access, and even some extras that I provide from time to time. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.